Will you please stand as we give thanks for the gift of baptism? Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock which gave us birth, our light and our salvation. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promises and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of water that sustains life. And above all, we praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your spirit and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forever. Amen. Grace and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the promised gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, the resplendent light of your truth shines from the mountaintop into our hearts. Transfigure us by your beloved Son and illumine the world with your image through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from 2 Kings. Now when the Lord was about to take Elijah up to heaven by a whirlwind, Elijah and Elisha were on their way from Gilgal. Elijah said to Elisha, Stay here, for the Lord has sent me as far as Bethel. But Elisha said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they went down to Bethel. The company of prophets who were in Bethel came out to Elisha and said to him, Do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he said, Yes, I know. Keep silent. Elijah said to him, Elisha, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to Jericho. But he said, As the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So they came to Jericho. The company of prophets who were at Jericho drew near to Elisha and said to him, do you know that today the Lord will take your master away from you? And he answered, yes, I know. Be silent. Then Elijah said to him, stay here, for the Lord has sent me to the Jordan. But he said, as the Lord lives and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So the two of them went on. Fifty men of the company of prophets also went, and soon at some distance from them, as they were both standing by the Jordan. Then Elijah took his mantle and rolled it up and struck the water. The water was parted to one side and to the other until the two of them crossed on dry land. When they had crossed, Elijah said to Elisha, tell me what I may do for you before I am taken from you. Elisha said, please let me inherit a double share of your spirit. He responded, you have asked a hard thing, yet if you see me as I am being taken from you, it will be granted. If not, it will not. As they continued walking and talking, a chariot of fire and horses of fire separated the two of them, and Elijah ascended in a whirlwind into heaven. Elisha kept watching and crying out, Father, Father, the chariot of Israel and its horsemen. But when he could no longer see him, he grasped his own clothes and tore them in two pieces. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> a reading from 2 Kings. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. 
For it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with him anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Please be seated. Got to get my props. All is well. In the name of Jesus. Have you ever had a conversation with someone and you knew, you, you knew they were not listening to you? How do you know? Perhaps their eyes wander. They might fidget. They might not respond appropriately to what you said. Or you can see them getting ready to answer before fully hearing what you have to say. They're just waiting for you to be done. They may even just start talking before you have completed your sentence. Go to some of my family meals, extended family. Or they may simply ignore you. Igor Stravinsky said, to listen is an effort. And just to hear is no merit. A duck hears also. Listening is different than merely hearing with your ears, or for our deaf congregation, hearing through hands and facial expressions. Listening is a skill to be learned and practiced. And to truly listen involves your ears, your eyes, your mind, your heart, and your whole self. God gave one command at the transfiguration. During this mysterious mountaintop experience, Peter is deeply moved and ready to do something and blurts out in true Peter fashion, let's build dwelling places. Let's be here with the majesty and the glory and the mighty heroes of Elijah and Moses. And then God's voice giving Jesus his identity as God's beloved son, just as at his baptism, gives the command. Do you remember what it was? Listen to him. The Greek word for listen is a present imperative, implying continuing action. It means keep on listening to him. Keep on, continue listening to him. And see Clifton Black writes, it's one thing to admire the Messiah. To listen and obey him is something else. Listen to what Jesus has said so far in the Gospel of Mark. Follow me. Do not be afraid, only believe. You give them something to eat. Deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. 
And after this transfiguration experience, soon they will hear, many who are first will be last and the last will be first. Whoever wishes to be first among you must be servant of all. Whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone. <laughs> and that's only from Mark. Matthew, Luke, and John have a lot more sayings, so anyone who thinks Christian faith is a retreat from reality is clueless. Listen. Deep listening is hard work. It means putting yourself and your agenda aside to be truly with another person. So I wonder, how do we even begin to listen to God? How do we tune out all the competing noise that bombards us in various forms? Well, let me tell you, Lent is coming. It starts this Wednesday. I hope you can worship with us or tune in on Wednesday evening because Lent, I think, is a perfect time to hone our holy listening skills and be present with God. What might God be calling you to do? Maybe that listening will take the form of extra devotional time. We have some extras in the back for Lent. They fit in your pocket or your purse. It's a wonderful way to spend some time listening. Taking a few minutes each day to read the reflection and some scripture. Letting God's voice speak to you. Listening may mean making a commitment to worship. Sundays, Wednesday afternoons here at Trinity, if you can, or perhaps in the evening at another congregation in the Reading Lutheran Parish. Or you may want to try deepening your listening by sitting in silence. This is really hard for some people. Centering prayer, where you focus on a holy word or Lexio Divina, where you meditate on just a small portion of scripture. Or holy listening may happen for you as you make a commitment to serve. At our Lutheran pantry at the second Thursday of each month, or joining a common ground service on a Sunday afternoon where you may hear the stories of others. Or it might be following the Cowabunga movement. You didn't get to hear about it yet, but our Cowabunga uh, movement at Trinity is that we are going to collect enough funds for a cow, for a village. Um, looking to, it's $500, but together we can do it. So you can even take your very own God's Global Barnyard barn home with you and um, see how there are ways that you can give. Um... And when you do that, you remember what God has given and we respond with thanksgiving as we work towards that cow goal. As our congregation continues to listen for God's voice and discern what God may be calling us to do together, I think it may help us to remember the importance of listening to others in our evangelism efforts. Too often evangelism is seen as talking Effective evangelism begins with listening, hearing the other's story. You don't throw a drowning person a sandwich, no matter how good the sandwich might be. To know what aspect of the good news one needs to hear, the evangelist first needs to listen to hear the need. If one is hungry, a sandwich is good news. If one is drowning, a rope or a life jacket is good news. Ultimately, we gather together because of this good news. We are not a dwelling place on a mountaintop, resting on our laurels, revering our beloved history and beautiful building. We are not a social club that gives us identity. We are not a social service agency, though we do support the work of many important organizations that meet the deep need of others. Now we gather together as part of the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We are the ones that proclaim Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives and of the universe. 
We are the ones who give witness to that bright, shining love of God and Jesus Christ, crucified and risen and present with us now through the Spirit. And we witness through listening to the other, especially those whose voices have been systematically silenced and not just spouting off what we believe or have experienced. So I encourage you, when you come to the table today, don't just hear the words, but listen deeply to Jesus. This is my body given for you. This is my blood shed for you. For you out of great love. And then we take that love and shine into the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Together, let us confess the faith of the church in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God, our light and our salvation, hears us when we pray, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the ministry of the gospel proclaimed in word and deed, for congregations near and far, and for all who show the face of Christ throughout the world, for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal and Father John, for St. Luke's Lutheran and Pastor Bill, for Christ Yoakum's and Pastor Arnold, for Trinity Deaf, Common Ground, and all our Lutheran and ecumenical partners in ministry, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the well-being of creation, for plants and animals, seas and skies, and creatures, seen and unseen, that all may be guided by your Holy Spirit to be stewards of our earth, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For firefighters and police officers, attorneys and advocates, civil servants and corporate executives, and leaders of governments, that through their insight and patience, peace and justice prevail throughout the world, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially Karen, Carl, and Betty, Kathy, Tom, Walter, Martha, Al, Joan, Barb, Ed, Carl, and Grace, that as Christ was transfigured on the mountaintop, sickness will be turned into health, loneliness into companionship, bereavement into consolation, and suffering into assurance. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For our members, Beverly, Edwin, Barbara, John and Larry, Christopher and Rebecca, and for all companions who accompany us on our journeys through life, for this community of faith that supports us, and for guidance during difficult times, that we see the glory of God revealed around us, let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the families and friends of Mary Good, for Blake Tobias and his family at the death of his grandfather Mark and his aunt Jean, and in thanksgiving for all the faithful departed, who now rest from their earthly pilgrimage, that their lives of service and prayer inspire us in our days, let us pray. Have, Have mercy, mercy, O God. God. Merciful God, you hear our prayers even before we speak them. Receive them. 
for the sake of the one through whom you have revealed your goodness, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, receive, receive the, the gifts we bring, ourselves, ourselves our, our time, and our possessions. possessions. Through, Through this meal, unite, unite us as your body, shining, shining with the light of your justice and mercy, for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. You are indeed holy, almighty, and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Remembering therefore his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these, your own gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Come, be filled with light and life. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. O morning star, fair and bright, you have refreshed us again with heavenly food. You are our dearest treasure. Go with us now, today, tomorrow, every day, that we tell the story of your never-ending love and sing your praise both now and forever. Amen. The God of glory dwell in you richly, name you beloved, and shine brightly on your path. And the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Take a deep breath, go in peace, and be the light of Christ. Thanks and be to God. God.